I would like to acknowledge the Indigenous people of this great nation, Australia. From Aboriginal nation to make up this land. The traditional custodians of this land. Let us all pay our respect to our elders, past and present, and those in the future. Every year for the last half century or so, on Australia Day and the Queen's birthday, the Governor General announces the Australian Honours List with hundreds of names. Some of them we all know, most of the people only know in their communities. Ordinary people doing extraordinary things. But they represent the diversity of Australian life, all the characters, all the background. There are volunteers and sports stars, scientists and celebrities. There are lawyers and public servants and members of the armed forces, you name it. They're inspirational people who give their time and their energy and their wisdom freely again and again. They're the sort of people we should recognise, people who represent the very best of Australia. It's just amazing. And uh, we call that a government house here, richness of spirit. There's an enormous richness of spirit across Australia in our communities. From grassroots to government house, that richness graces these Canberra corridors twice a year and at other venues across Australia. It's the culmination of a unique process that blossoms in all corners and communities of Australia. Since uh, 1975, approximately 400,000 Australians have been recognised under this system. How are they selected? There's not an elite in Australia reaching down and giving out medals to people. Ours is quite a different system in Australia. I think almost perhaps unique in that it's bottom up. It's fed by nominations from the community. There's an Order of Australia Council and they consider each of the nominations. And if people aren't nominated, they can't be recognised. Australians need to be really aware that this is the preeminent system by which we recognise how people have made a contribution to Australia. And when you see those contributions, don't just applaud it, look to see have they been recognised, if not, nominate them. Professor Hoffman is a noted scholar, scientific leader and mentor whose practical contributions to Australian agricultural and biodiversity and to the world health have been exemplary. Professor Ari Hoffman appointed a companion of the order. And as you saw in today's uh, uh, ceremony, global impact. I mean, the eight people we recognise as companions of the Order of Australia today, the global impact they have had in health, uh, biosecurity, food security, it's just staggering uh, what people achieve. Hundreds of millions of people have been positively affected by their work. So when we bounce from that uh, down to people who yeah, every week of the year are giving into their local community. They see issues, they see problems, and they address them. Or there's stalwarts who you know, keep the guides running, the scouts running, uh, all these different organisations who are really dependent on volunteers. They're there. And on top of that, we recognise those who serve in our emergency services. So, you know, men and women who have given decades of service, rural fire service, SES and so on. We get a great joy out of the day. Some of the faces may be well known, but not always their quiet service. The desire to bring about positive and lasting change for those at risk in our society inspires us all. Mrs Deborah Lee Furness appointed an Officer of the Order. It's a real honour. I feel very honoured because this shines a light on the actual work that we do, which is raise awareness around vulnerable children, around adoption, around kids in foster care. So I get that opportunity to keep talking about that, which we've been doing with our organisation here, Adopt Change, for the last 15 years, um, trying to bring awareness, trying to bring change and trying to make the larger community aware of the situations that these kids are in. So it's, it's a great opportunity. Proud husband Hugh Jackman, who was a recipient last year, calls in from New York. Look, I've got one like you. 
I think I'll be more alert now to really pay attention to who I, I see out there doing extraordinary stuff, who doesn't get patted on the back every day. I'll be, I'll be up there putting in my nomination for them. And then we meet people who um, just go about doing their work. One this week, Mr Alan Jessup, uh, in his 90s now, Salvation Army man. He's been standing in the uh, shopping centre in Canberra every year for decades, collecting money at Christmas time. He's raised more than $6 million. Is that right? And uh, just standing there, a just lovely rattling man, the, the just car. rattling the box. Yeah. And it's very much an awareness thing. And what we're saying to them is, yeah. thank you for what you've done for your community in Australia, yeah, but through that, what you've done for Australia. So more women, more from the multicultural area and more from our Indigenous area. So we work on the way to improve uh, the representation in each of those areas. Coming up, we meet a radio astronomer who retired and went away for almost 15 years. She decided to come back and became a world leader in her science. Our people are the first scientists. We're the first astronomers, first chemists. You go down to any coals and woolies, you see tea tree oil, that's bar alum, that's bungalow medicine. It's not advertised as black fellow medicine, but you know, our people have done science for 65,000 plus years. This was a love of science from when I was a really young kid. I didn't go to university, I actually left in year 10 and um, started working in a wildlife sanctuary in Boyupbrook. Um, that was 3,000 kilometres from my house and, and I had a dream of being a zookeeper and, and then I did it and then I started shearing alpacas. An alpaca shearer? Yes. Not a sheep shearer? Right? Not a sheep shearer, no. I give resources to kids that deserve them, who don't have them. And it's very simple what I do with deadly science. I, I like, and it's quite therapeutic actually. So books, Lego, microscopes, telescopes, you name it, a deadly learner's session where they can connect with a scientist online and they can ask anything, ask any questions. For me, it's just really important that we give these kids the opportunities. And not every kid that I work with is going to become a scientist or a STEM professional, but I'm sure as hell going to make sure they have the opportunity to become one. And do you think education is the silver bullet? If you want to close the gap of discrimination, is it start with education? Oh, most definitely. And it starts on both sides. Um, we need to educate non-Indigenous people that our people always have been, always will be clever, intelligent people with beautiful culture. And, and we also need to educate our kids that, you know what, if you have a passion and a purpose, they're the two ingredients you need. Uh, I nearly fell off my chair. Um, my heart raced a little bit and I was honoured. Um, I instantly thought of my mother and my family and my grandfather is no longer with us. I thought about all my family. I'm in Walgut. I'm very honoured to take this responsibility because I now have a role to make sure that that responsibility is accessible to the next generation of first scientists. Be brave, be deadly, and support your people and community that are doing the work because they deserve to be honoured. And I hope that we can get more deadly people getting these honours because it's really important that we hold our young people and our, our people and community up high so they can bring everyone else up with them. It is a huge honour and I'm extremely proud of the things I've done, but also it's a huge privilege and it, I'm deeply honoured. Totally surprised and overwhelmed and speechless, which doesn't often happen for me. It's validated a lot of the, I guess, philosophy that I've had of education being so important, science being so important, excellence being so important. So I was the first one in our family to go to university. And when I finished my honours degree, I applied to Sydney University to do a PhD. Um, and I arrived to find I was the first female PhD student in physics. My PhD project was to map the Milky Way galaxy using a radio telescope, using the Monoclo telescope. It was an astonishing machine, the biggest in the Southern Hemisphere for many years. It produced amazing maps of the universe. I spent a lot of time there, and that telescope is very dear to my heart, and it's still working. It's had various upgrades, but it is still doing very high-quality research. It's an amazing machine. 
and would eventually become director of the Malonglo Observatory and head of the School of Physics, but not until she'd taken a 15-year break from astronomy. And when I was head of school, I said, what our talented people really need is a new building. The nano hub behind the School of Physics is the most astonishing technical building that was purpose-built and has some amazing scientists working in there. Many other people carried it through and um, I was just a small cog, but somebody has to start. And was also involved in an international project to build the world's largest radio telescope. So the Square Kilometre Array will be the most powerful radio telescope when it's built. It's currently on two sites, one in Western Australia and one in, in South Africa. And this will be able to view the early stages of the universe in the most exquisite detail. I was elected to the fellowship of the Australian Academy of Technology and Engineering, which is a wonderful nexus of scientists, technologists and engineers across ac academia, but also in business and industry. When I became head of school, there's an opportunity then to mentor young scientists, young women, and encourage them. So it is important to help the next generation. It's really important to make sure that we approach the challenges, which are many facing uh, this world. Volunteers are always unpaid and often unheralded, yet they represent the fabric of our communities. The two people you're about to meet embody the essence of that service and sacrifice. Walking out onto a baseball field brings me back to when I was a kid. You know how you see things in your life and jolts that memory or a song you hear and you, you go back to that time. Every time I walk out on the baseball fields, that's my happy place. That really is my happy place. Laurie Barnes has been making happy places for countless thousands of kids and adults for, well, let's just say, for a long time. Just grab a ball, everybody. Right, uh, we want a four-seam fastball, so show me That's what a long time, ball. and now, what is it, 2022? Oh, right. And I started good, with nine, good. I'm 67. Well, let's change uh, it to a well, you do the numbers, that's 58 years or something. Yeah, good. All the trophies, all the mementos, Laurie traces back to his dad, who founded a baseball club in Canberra. Laurie first founded a club himself in Gladstone, Queensland. He also helped launch a baseball academy in the ACT. And he's been a player, coach, president and committee member in clubs from Canberra to Tweed Heads. Also in Sydney at Bayside, Cronulla and St George. His latest field of dreams is the Arncliff Scots Club, where he's been president, head coach and even the groundsman since 2006. When I got the phone call, on the phone it had Governor General and I looked at it and I thought, geez, this might be an important call. Then he just went on and said, no, you've been approached to be awarded an Order of Australia. And I, I thought, wow. Then I, um, I thought, well, I better ring my parents because Dad's 93 this year and Mum's 89 and they're still kicking a line. They actually started it in Canberra for us and uh, they were absolutely gobsmacked. They just so you could feel the, the, them being so proud, which, yeah, made me a little bit emotional, which I'm getting now, but yeah, it's been a, it's a great journey. Just thought, I really haven't done that much, only just because I, I love doing it. It's something that I've, I've done because I wanted to do it, not because I wanted to receive anything for it, and uh, it just made me a bit humble in, in a lot of ways, you know? It means a lot to the sport itself to have someone, not with one of the biggest sports, but just a little major, minor sport like ourselves, baseball, to have someone nominated that can create something better for our sport and give it a bit more profile, which would be great. I joined the uh, Great Orthodox Parish of St Spirit on Kingsford in uh, July of 76, which is coming up to 46 years. And I've been there all this time. Filled different positions in the parish, from president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, I've done all the positions. 
He arrived from Cyprus as a little boy of nine. Ever since, Con Pavlou has given heart, soul and countless hours of voluntary service to his community and to his country. I uh, first feel the uh, excitement and I was so overwhelmed that I'll be considered for the award of the uh, Order of Australia medal. And at the same time, I feel very humble that I have been considered and uh, recognised. Con has helped nourish and build generations through faith, sport and education. In '83, St Spiron Church started the first Greek Orthodox College in New South Wales with 46 children, and we're now we're up to 800. We started with three classes, and this year we grew by a class till we ended up you know, having a full year 12. From schools to football teams, way back in 1979, kids from the Greek schools wanted to play competitive footy. From there we grew up to 16 teams, and up to this date we still have about a dozen teams uh, women's teams, men's teams and juniors. I've coached for a number of years myself and some of those boys that I coach that there were, might have been nine, ten year olds, they see me today, they recognise me. Sometimes I don't recognise them because now they're in the 40s or 50s and they come up to me and say hello and that's a big satisfaction for me. I'm a Justice of the Peace since 1975. I do get quite a few calls to attend to matters that people might require. I usually meet them at my local coffee shop. And through all those years, I've been lucky enough to have the, the support and understanding of my wife, because it has taken a lot of time away from home. Uh, and a big thank you to her for being supportive. Because Australia accepted us migrants with open arms, I might say, uh, we in turn gave back what we had to offer and migrants, as most people know, helped build Australia to what it is today. Ruti Hill High School has been really special. What gives me the most satisfaction is when I can help improve people's lives and particularly our young people and those most in need, such as the indigenous communities or our refugee population. Thank you for making the time for our leadership program today. So, what Dr. Smita Shah is the community physician at Westmead Hospital. Her career has been devoted to education and developing preventative medicine, all aimed at improving health in culturally diverse and disadvantaged communities. When the call came from the Governor General's office, I was actually teaching at the University of Sydney. I didn't know how to respond. I was just thrilled and de delighted and felt very honoured. But it not only recognises my work, but it gives credit to the many people and organisations that have been involved with me. Through peer education and empowerment education, we can actually help young people take control of their lives and reduce the risk factors for chronic diseases for the future. The greatest inspiration of my life was my father, who was working with the Maasai tribe in Tanzania and then came out to Australia as a general practitioner. Dr. Smita has founded two award-winning programs for high schools, one involving asthma, discouraging young people from smoking and from vaping. So peers are really important and vital in how active you're going to be. So choose your friends, right? Okay. Another, Fantastic. Students as Lifestyle well, what Activist, what's called the Salsa Program, which motivates them to eat healthy food and be physically active at school. We partnered with Ruti Hill High School and developed the first peer-led program to prevent obesity in young people. That's the Salsa program. And the program's run since then, not only at Ruti Hill High Schools, but in over 30 schools across Western Sydney and beyond. And it continues to help make a difference. The school focuses strongly on youth voice through leadership and advocacy. During COVID, when the water bubblers were closed, the students advocated for water refill stations and through their advocacy and the work that they did, they got the support from the local general practitioners for funding towards those water refill stations. And we can proudly say that we were able to install six water refill stations in schools in Mount Druitt through student advocacy. 
In the current environment, student voice is going to be crucial because they are the ones who are working with issues such as climate change and heat and other areas, and we want them to be the leaders of the future and the agents of change. This medal is shared by us all, and we are so proud and grateful for receiving this award. You know, the honour system is uniquely Australian. It speaks to who we are. But let's leave the last word to the Governor-General. Uh, the message is, this is your system. Nominate those people you see in your community who are making extraordinary contributions to the community and through that to Australia. Your system, if you don't nominate, these people will not be recognised.